Welcome to worship on this fine day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We will celebrate Holy Communion today, so uh, make sure that you have your elements that you got as you came in the door. Also, if you are on Facebook Live, you may want to uh, gather your communion elements now, and we will commune together later in the service. And with that, we will begin with our confession and forgiveness. If you will please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, and all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our first song, All Who Believe and Are Baptized. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been in Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon, upon coming to faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get up and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scriptures that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read our psalm responsively, Psalm 22, verse 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. And proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God whom we have not seen, while hating fellow Christians whom we regularly see. Love toward God is to be matched by love toward others because the essence of God is love. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. <clears throat> Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son 
<clears throat> excuse me, God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. <clears throat> and this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. <clears throat> beloved, since God loved his son to be, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. <clears throat> no one has ever seen God. If we love another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. <clears throat> for those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And I ask you to stand at this time if you are able uh, for the reading of the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Bear fruit and abide. These are the two things Jesus is calling us to do today, these two verbs. I love to go to the garden stores and the plant nurseries in the spring. Beautiful rows of the hardy green plants are ready to grow wherever you plant them, whether you plant them in your garden or a flower pot or a hanging basket. Last year, I purchased and planted a cucumber plant from a no local nursery, and I tended it faithfully with water, and I made sure it was in the sun, and soon enough, I saw little green cucumbers growing, and it's a wonderful feeling once you plant a plant that bears fruit. But also, I saw some little yellow balls growing, and they grew big to be about the size of a tennis ball. Apparently, I had planted a mixed-variety cucumber plant because that pl those were called lemon cucumbers. I don't know if you've ever seen a lemon cucumber, but they look just like a tennis ball. They taste really pretty good, um, but I never knew 
that that's what I was planting. I was growing something that was totally unexpected. Some regular green cucumbers and some little round treasures, apparently mixed seeds. Surprise, unexpected fruit from what I worked so hard to grow. In our gospel lesson today, one of the things we are called to do is to bear fruit. Now, I would guess that cucumbers are not what Jesus was talking about, but we are called to bear fruit nonetheless. Our story comes from what we call Jesus' farewell discourse in the Gospel of John. It's a time when Jesus is sitting with his disciples for the last time before his arrest and his death. He is giving them some direction in what to do when he's no longer with them. He essentially is saying goodbye. And most importantly, he pours out his love for them and tries to explain the sacred connection that they have together that can never be separated when they continue to follow his word. Jesus wants to reassure them that I will be with you. We will be forever connected. How can he get them to understand this very sacred and holy connection? Well, he uses the image of the vine and the vine keeper. I like the way Eugene Peterson interprets this passage in the message. He says, I am the real vine and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned by the message I have spoken. The disciples are already pruned by the word. So it has been set in motion. The disciples who are listening, who are the listeners in this farewell discord, should think of themselves as the branches that are bearing the fruit of God. We too are the branches. The vine keeper or the farmer is an active role pruning and caring for the branches for us to make us bear much fruit. And what does it look like for the disciples to bear fruit? In Jesus' time, it meant sharing the story of Jesus' incarnation, his ministry moments, his death and his resurrection and his ascension. Just like the Ethiopian Munich had that story shared with him, when Philip shared it. They were to share the word of Jesus that they had received. They were to bear witness to the truth and make sure that people were connected to the vine. They were to continue the ministry of Jesus, healing the sick, reaching out to those who were on the margins to forgive sins in Jesus' name. They were commanded to love as Jesus loved. As Jesus' disciples, we too are called to bear fruit in this way. John speaks of the gift of love in our epistle lessons today. We love because God first loved us. Just as we are the object of God's love, we need an object to receive our love that God has given us to give. That object is each other. We bear fruit as disciples in Christ to love one another. Our friends and our enemies, those who are easy to love and those who are difficult to love, those who are front and center today in society and those who are at the margins, those who are popular and those who are awkward, our way of bearing fruit is to love others. But we do not do that without abiding in Jesus. In fact, our love for one another will naturally flow from the abiding love that God plants and gives us. In our scripture today, Jesus goes on to say, and I'm reading this uh, out of the message again, live in me, make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that the branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine and you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relationship is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you cannot produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood gathered up to be thrown into the bonfire. But if you make yourself at home with me 
and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is when you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples. If God is the vine grower and Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches, what should we do then? Ultimately, the task we, has, we have to do is to abide, to tarry, to stay, to cling, to remain, to depend, to rely, to last, to persevere, to commit, to continue, to tolerate, to endure, to comply, to accept, to hang in there for the long haul, and to make ourselves at home in the word of God. It is a very tricky word, verb, abide, passive on one hand and active on the other. To abide is to say rooted in the place, in one place, but it is also meaning to grow and to change and to multiply, to flourish in place. It is a vulnerable making verb. If we abide, we'll get pruned. Just like the first disciples, God is pruning us. It is a risky verb. If we abide, we'll bear fruit that others will see and taste. We will bear love for one another. It is a humbling verb. If we abide, we'll have to accept the nourishment that is not of our own making. Our lives will be Christ-centered. And it is a relentlessly communal verb. If we abide, we will have to coexist with our fellow branches. Our focus will be on our neighbor and not on ourselves. We will have to live a life that is messy and crowded and tangled up in the vine, a life that's deeply rooted and wildly fertile. I can't Im ever imagine that there was a time when Jesus' followers thought that this image of the vine was easy to do in daily life. But I think it is especially challenging to do now. We live in bitterly divided times, and we have good reasons to be cautious and self-protected, even within the church. It's hard in our self-promoting culture to confess that we are lost, to lifeless, lost and lifeless on our own. But through the word that Jesus gives us to abide and bear fruit, our lives can be whole and new and filled and flourishing. When we allow Jesus to abide with us and we enter into that extraordinary abiding that is in the life of the Holy Trinity, we are not diminished as persons, but rather we come to our truest existence as persons. We will be living according to the heart and mind and indeed the very, very life of God. Bear fruit and abide, those two verbs, those two words. How will that look in our lives as we go through this week and always? Sometimes the fruit might even surprise us. Amen. Our song of the day is hymn number 272, verses 1 through 3, Abide With Me. Thank you. 
Alive in Christ, in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in our church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of the creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. You will rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Bless all the service members who are serving our country. Hear us, O God. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all of those in need of your love, those who are poor and lowly and outcast or weak or fearful. We especially this week pray for Dory, Lorraine, and Scott, Brian and Kathy and Bruce and Dennis, Megan and Jeff and Nancy, and Sarah and Kathy and Randy, and Keith and Roger and Barb, and Jody and Jay, Tyler and Logan, Sherry and Jim, Alicia, Tim, Sean, Norman, Bonnie, and Grace. We also pray for those who are living with cancer, Tilly, Leanne, Tim, Mary, Marge, Clint, Linda, Joyce, Olaf, and Roxy. Hear us, O oh God. You gather us with all of the saints by the power of your spirit. With them may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take this time to share a wave of peace with those around. We thank you for your faithful giving. If you wish to give an offering, you can place it in the plate that's located um, at the back of the church, or you can mail a check or give online. The information for that is printed in the bulletin. Or for you on Facebook Live, it is available um, at the completion of the service. <clears throat> As we move into our time of Holy Communion, please take out your communion elements and hold them during the words of institution, and we will commune together after we pray the Lord's Prayer. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see, for the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you will strengthen us through this gift. In faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have several announcements today that are printed in our bulletin. Um, I will highlight, um, of course, our new worship times, which are participating in right now. Um, our church is at 9 o'clock here at Faith for the months of May through August. Men's Morning Bible Study will be at 7.30 a.m. Um, on Saturday, May 8th. And on May 17th, Ruth Bible Study will be. Uh, confirmation will be this Wednesday. We have two more confirmation classes left for the year. So are there any other announcements that we wish to share with one another at this time? Oh, yes. We are um, in the midst of creating a church directory. So if you could please uh, have your pictures in as soon as possible, that would be wonderful. You can either email them to the church office uh, or drop them off. And with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn today is, I am so glad Jesus lifted me. Go in peace, serve the, po serve the Lord, and remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>